All right, I'll see you on the map. So as you come to your mat, you might have a little helper like I do. Just sit for a moment and find your sit bones. So those two bones at the bottom of your pelvis. And you're gonna feel yourself anchored to the ground or to your chair or to whatever you're sitting on. The softer the surface, the harder it is to feel those sit bones. And then feel your spine long and lifted. The pets are no longer used to me sitting on the floor talking, so they they get they get excited with the uh, with the classes that she'll settle in a moment. Okay, so actually, I'm going to come back closer to the camera so I can introduce the breathing technique that we'll do. So just finding a settled space sitting, long spine. If you need to use something to um, rest your back on, that's fine. You can use the wall or the back of the chair or whatever to support yourself. So we're gonna do a breath technique called Shitali breath. And Shitali breath is we inhale through the mouth in a very particular way and exhale through the nose. And this is a breath technique that I, I've been aware of for as long as I've taught yoga, almost 30 years. Um, but it was really the importance of it or how effective it is was really driven home to me um, in 2009, I guess, when I was doing my first uh, internship in India. And I was working in a yoga therapy center and every single student that came in practically, they were teaching this breath technique too. And um, I asked, why is it, you know, because yoga therapy is so individualized, why is it that we're teaching this same breath technique to everybody? And the answer was because it's effective and it's, there's very few contraindications for this breath and that it's helpful to almost everybody. It has a very balancing effect. So we wanna kind of balance out the emotions and it's done in a very particular way. It's sort of a cooling, grounding, calming breath. And so the way you do it is with your tongue, you're gonna to curl it into a tube. And apparently about 30% of people can't do that um, action. So if you can't curl your tongue into a tube, like so, you're going to take your tongue to the back of your teeth, so just inside, and you're going to breathe along the sides of your tongue, like that. So you're either going to breathe in through the tube of your tongue or down along the sides of your tongue. So excuse me for one second. So give that a try and see how that feels for you. So inhale, exhale through the nose. And then we'll add one more piece to this. And this is a, a little bit of a neck release. So you're gonna start with your chin down towards your chest and then inhale and lift your head to neutral. As you exhale through your nose, you're gonna lower the head again. So inhale. Exhale. Let's do a few more like that. And if that feels uncomfortable or creates agitation, just breathe normally, okay?
gradually let your breath return to normal. Let your head sit over your spine to its balance. You can have your eyes closed and take a moment to notice how you feel now. And even though I suggested that this breath is a calming, balancing breath, that may not be how you feel. And so please tune into what is true for you. So maybe you feel agitated trying to do all these head movements, tongue things, and there's maybe it's too much. It feels like confusing and I'm not doing it right and there's agitation there. So whatever comes up for you is absolutely normal and fine. And acknowledging that. Right, rather than thinking maybe I did something wrong. Now, maybe the opposite is true. Maybe you feel much more balanced and much more calm now. So you can also recognize and notice that. Okay, so we'll stay seated. If you need to shift or stretch your legs out at any time, please do. If you want to switch to a chair, if you're on the floor, just be comfortable. We're going to work with the, the, the wrists and hands, neck and shoulders a little bit before we get moving uh, a bit more than that. So with a nice long spine, again, plug your sit bones into the earth. So feel the sense of your, your two sit bones, almost like the, the plugs, you know, the two prongs of a plug plugging into the earth. And feel that stability that comes from that. And then your upper body lifts and becomes a little lighter, a little freer with that support from the earth. So let's take the chin now, bring it down towards the front of the chest. And we've been doing that in the breath technique, but now resting here for a moment and feeling the stretch in the back of the neck. And then slowly lifting the head, finding a balanced place over your shoulders, over your spine, and then turning your head to one side. And as you turn, notice when your body says that's enough. So maybe you meet restriction, maybe you meet discomfort. How is it that you know that that is far enough for you? And then with your eyes, look as far behind you as you can. So keep your eyes moving to the side. Stretch your eye muscles a little. And then slowly come back to the center. And we'll go the other way. So again, notice, and the neck may go further or not quite as far on the side. Notice what tells you that's enough. Is it discomfort or does it just stop, feel restricted? And then you can follow with your gaze. So looking as far behind you with your eyes, stretching the muscles of your eyes. And then slowly come back to center. So we're gonna keep the head neutral, but look all the way up with your eyes, up toward the ceiling, stretching the eyes up. And look all the way down to the ground, stretching the eyes down. And then just find a comfortable gaze. Or eyes closed is fine. And we'll take the head and tilt it to one side. Now, if you want a little bit more stretch, the opposite arm can reach out. If you're on the ground, you can reach your fingers to the ground. If you're on a chair, you can just hang the arm down. And then coming to center, switch sides. Again, if you want to reach with the opposite arm, it can give you a little bit more stretch. I feel the sides much tighter on me. You might notice one side is tighter on you than the other. Good, come back to the center and place your hands on your knees or your thighs, whatever is comfortable and we'll do a little of that cat cow movement so that means a little arching of your back lifting of the heart as you inhale you're lifting the head but just in line with your spine you're not cranking it back and then as you round your back you're exhaling so inhaling and finding an arch or extension of the spine exhaling rounding or flexing the spine
Move at your own breath pace. Great, and then gradually come back to the center. And let's lift the hands and do some circles for the wrist. So you can circle one way, circle the other way. And notice what's going on with your wrist. So I can hear a little clicking in there sometimes. It feels pretty smooth most of the time. And then we'll take one hand, either palm up or palm forward, and we'll take the fingers back. So it's either back toward the floor or back towards your body. So we're stretching into the forearm and wrist a little bit. And then take that same hand, turn it down the other way, and gently press down, very, very gentle here. And then other side, so palm up or palm forward. We're drawing the fingers back with the opposite hand. So you feel some stretch up into the forearm and wrist. And then you can turn the hand the other way and give it a little stretch across the top of the hand. You wanna be really gentle with this. Great. And then squeeze your hands into fists and then stretch your fingers wide and squeeze and stretch. Great, and then give them a shake. Good, lifting the shoulders up to the ears, breathing in. Exhale with a big sigh. <sighs> you let the shoulders down. And again, lift. <sighs> And once more. And then press the shoulders down, lift the crown of the head. Take a big breath and then exhale and relax. And let's come back to that arching and rounding movement for a moment. And then take that into a circle. So taking the chest toward one side, toward the other side, and back. Now, this could be a little small circle, more upright. Or if it feels good for you and it feels like a nice stretch, you can make your circle much bigger. Again, it doesn't matter if you're on the floor or a chair, wherever you're sitting. Go the other way a few times as well. See if anything changes for you. Sometimes it feels a little different. And I'm noticing my hips feel a bit different going one way versus the other. So when we tune into what we notice, those little minor details, those subtleties in the body, <clears throat> when we tune into that, it helps to, to keep us from going elsewhere in the mind. Great. And then let's return back to a neutral spine. And if you're sitting on the chair or on a couch or on a cushion, I would recommend you now come down to the floor if you have a mat on your mat, if not just on the floor, carpet or hard floor, if that's all you've got. And bring your legs out in front. I'm just going to take my sweater off now. Feet out in front, hands supporting you from behind and we'll take the knees side to side. You're, you'll probably crawl a bit forward with your bum as you do this, so you can just shift back or walk your hands forward as necessary. So the knees could come toward the ground or it could be just a little movement side to side. Really tune in and check in with your hip. So your hip is a ball and socket joint. <clears throat> it has quite a, a wide range of movement, but also, 
you know, hips can get tight and stiff over time or injured and that can limit the range of motion. So you wanna be kind to your hips, kind to your knees as you do this, checking in. A lot of the time we do movement just in our regular life without really kind of feeling the impact of that on our body. So let's really check in, great. And then come back to the center eventually, stretch your legs out and give them a shake. Shake them against the ground. That's it, great. And then we're gonna to come to sit up tall and bring one knee in towards the body. And then let that knee come to the side so you can take the hand um, on the same side to the knee. And now the other hand can either rest behind you and you can do this kind of motion, opening and closing the knee, or if you have a little more flexibility in your hip, you might lift the foot off the ground and take it into your other hand. And if you do that, flex your foot so your foot stays in line with your ankle and doesn't twist on you. It's a nice straight line through your ankle and foot, lifting up tall and rocking a bit side to side. Now, if you get there and you think that's too much for my poor hip, you'll rest on your hand, bring the foot down and just open and close. Great, and then you can bring the foot down. And if it's comfortable for you, let the knee go out to the side. Now, if you find that that is uncomfortable for whatever reason, you want some padding, you could literally, I just took my jacket off, I could roll that up and stuff it under my knee to give my knee some support. Um, it could be a block or a blanket or a pillow, whatever you've got handy if you need something. So for me on, on this side, it feels fine. I just let the knee rest to the side. I'm gonna use my hands to lift my spine tall. And I don't think it's showing on the video screen, but this foot, the one that's on the ground, is flexed, toes pointing up, and my leg is engaged. From here, lifting the arms, we're going to come forward and we'll move dynamically, which means we'll go forward with an exhale and lift up with an inhale. Go at your own pace, so whatever your breath rhythm is, Exhale forward, inhale lift, or you can just move at a comfortable pace and breathe at whatever rate feels right for you. So sometimes when we try to coordinate the movement and breath, if it feels awkward, it can create agitation. So more important that the body feels supported, feels relaxed, that it's not too much. And then eventually you could stay for a few breaths. So when you're staying, let your head release. The hands can rest on your leg or come to the floor beside your leg. It's not a goal to reach your foot or bring your head to your knee or anything like that. Especially as we're warming up, you want to relax the shoulders. So for me, I'm feeling it mostly in the back side, so the, the lower back on the side that's the opposite of my straight leg. You may feel it somewhere different. Wherever you feel it, you're going to send your breath to where you feel tightness. Imagine your breath going there. Imagine your breath creating some space. Exhale. Imagine yourself softening a little more as you exhale. One more breath. And then we'll lift all the way up, reaching the arms up, finding that length in the back, find a little, little lift in your heart, and then release the arms down. You can lean back on your hands to stretch that leg out and give both legs a shake again. And then sitting up tall once more, we'll bring the other leg in and same thing here. So you could rest back on your other hand and just open and close that knee to the side like sort of half butterfly pose. Or if it's available to you and your hips are happy with this, you can take your flexed foot in one hand, the knee in the other, sit up tall and rock your leg across your body. So 
So really honoring what you feel in your body. If it feels like too much and you start forcing your body, your body responds by, by being stressed. Right? It's like, you're hurting me. <laughs> and it tenses up and creates that stress response. So we don't want to do that. Right? Then when you're ready, you can bring the foot back down. And then again, let the knee go to the side and really check in. Is this comfortable? Do you need to support that knee with whatever is handy um, so that it's, it's feeling comfortable? Or is it okay just as is? The other foot is flexed, toes pointing toward the ceiling, drawing up on the thigh. And use your hands again behind you to lift you up tall. And then we'll lift the arms up, breathing in. And again, coming forward any amount. It might just be a few inches for you. Going forward and then lifting. Breathing in as you lift, breathing out as you go forward, or as I mentioned earlier, just moving at the pace that's right for you and breathing comfortably. And again, this time when you come forward, you can stay for a few breaths if it feels comfortable for you. If not, just come back upright anytime. Hands on the leg or the floor. Soften your shoulders. Let your head release. There's nothing to see now. And then notice where do you feel the tightness? Where do you feel the stretch? And sending your breath there. Creating some space with your breath. There's no goal. It's the, the journey, not the destination in yoga. It's not the glory of the pose, but the path that takes us through the practice. When you're ready, lifting all the way up, breathing in. Exhale and release. Then you can rest back on your hands. Give your legs a little shake, stretching them out. And then we'll bend both knees, bringing the knees in, wrap your arms around your knees, let your head come down, and then take a few breaths here. See if you can feel the breath across the back of your body, creating some space in your back ribs. Between your shoulder blades, perhaps. And then we're going to emerge from that position, taking the knees apart, bringing the hands either to the ankles or if you need the support, bring them behind you to lift up tall. So breathe in here. And then we'll round the back, bring the knees together and bring the arms around. And then inhale, either reach for the ankles or swing the arms back. Knees come apart. Chest lifts and then exhale, coming in. A couple more like that. And then we're going to stay. So as you bring the knees apart, soles of the feet together, you can, again, either keep the hands behind you. The idea is we want to try and lift the spine up tall, not slump back. And if it's a better position for you to hold the ankles, you can kind of pull back against the ankles and use them for support to stay upright, whatever works for you. And for those of you who want more stretch, though you may not want much more or any at all, you could come a little bit forward. And then you might take your hands to the ground or whatever's comfortable at your head, come forward. But really it's whatever position works for you. And there's no right pose we're trying to get to. It's a matter of what feels right in my body? What feels like a good enough stretch that I'm feeling something, but not so much that I'm creating tension. And then when you're ready, you'll bring the knees back together. 
rest back on your hands. Take the feet wide apart, at least as wide as your shoulders, if not wider. And we'll go back to that side to side movement that we did earlier. So now if you like, you can add a twist. So as the knees come down to one side, you'll let go with the opposite arm. You'll swing that arm around and you'll bring it down behind you or on the leg to lift your spine tall and look around behind you. And then you'll go back the other way. Knees come down, that hip is gonna lift, your arm will lift and both hands help to extend your spine as you come around. And go side to side a couple of times with that little twist. And then eventually come back to the center and you can stretch your legs out and give them a little shake. So let's come around onto all fours now. You can just swing your legs around behind you. If you need extra padding under your knees, please take care of yourself. So get what you need, a, a pillow or a blanket. And uh, if you have any issues with your wrists, with weight on your wrists, first of all, having the hands a bit forward of your shoulders takes some of the pressure off the wrist. Or for some people, it, it feels really good to roll the mat up and put the heels of the hand on the mat to create a little bit more cushioning. So you can see what feels best for you. So hands either under the shoulders or a little ahead of the shoulders, knees under the hips, and we'll lift the tail, draw the shoulders back, you can bend the arms a little bit, and crown of the head reaches forward and slightly up. So we don't want to crank the head back. We want to think about it extending along the length of the spine. And then opposite, you know, tuck your tail under around your back and bring your chin in close to your chest. So bending the elbows a little as you come into the arched position. Otherwise, we tend to kind of lock and let the shoulders come up to the ears. You want to bend the, bend the arms, and that way the shoulders move back. And then pressing spine toward the ceiling. And repeating that a few times. You can breathe in as you arch, breathe out as you round. You can either keep with this movement or if child's pose is a, a good position for you, you can, instead of just rounding your back, you can move your hips back towards your heels, bring your head down as you exhale, and then come back up as you inhale. Rounding and moving back, perhaps, as you exhale. Inhaling and arching. And then vary the movement any way you like. So it could be a little tail wagging side to side. Maybe you like to circle the hips around. And then eventually find your way to either child's pose with your hips back under your heels. You can have your weight on your forearms or your head on your hands or the ground. Or if child's pose isn't comfortable for your knees or your ankles, you could be in a modified puppy pose, lifting the hips and having your weight on your forearms and your head hanging down. So an opportunity to pause for a moment, to check in, to feel your breath, to remind yourself to be as present as possible tuning into the sensations in your body and the feeling of your breath moving. Great, and then eventually coming back up to all four. And we're going to make our way to a standing forward bend. You can either do that by stepping your feet underneath you from here and coming, lifting the hips, or if downward dog is a pose that you're comfortable with, you could come first to downward dog and then walk forward. 
So from downward dog, start. If you come into downward dog, starting with your knees bent, and you can walk your feet on the ground as if you're walking on the spot, heels coming down. Just check in with your wrist if it's too much for you. Just walk forward anytime to a standing forward bend. And then gradually, bit by bit, one foot at a time, a few inches at a time, walking forward. You'll probably get partway there and you'll maybe get stuck. And if you get stuck, you're just going to stop there, walk your hands back to your feet, and end up in that forward bend. You can let the arms hang or bring your elbows up onto your thighs above your knees. Or cross your arms and hang. Take a couple of breaths here. Try to let your head really release. Imagine the weight of your head is pulling on your spine and creating traction. And then bend your knees even more. Let your arms be heavy. Let your head hang down. And you're going to slowly roll yourself right hmm. wonderful so coming onto your mat in what we call tadasana or mountain pose and in mountain pose your feet are hip distance apart they're parallel to one another and by hips it's the the bones you can find them in the front of your hips not the outside of your hips where the flesh is which is obviously going to be wider so you want to stack and align the bones. And then we're going to roll to the outer edges of the feet. Roll to the inner edges of your feet. And go back and forth. So it's this movement of the ankle, inversion and eversion, it's called in anatomical terms. And then you're going to try to find a place where you're even where your foot and ankle line up. So many of us stand either with the, the feet turned a little, or the ankles rolled in a bit or rolled out. And you can usually tell this by the wear on your shoes if they're worn more on the inside or the outside. So you, you can look down and see if you can line up your ankles in line with your feet. Right. And when you get there or as close as possible, we're gonna go forward and back. So rocking onto the balls of the feet and then rocking into the heels. You can only rock back so far <laughs> and rock forward and rock back. As you rock back, notice what happens to your thighs. As you rock forward, notice what happens. Notice if you're holding your breath now and come back to your breath if you're holding it. Right. And then find a place that feels pretty even between the balls of your feet and your heels. It's amazing how easy it is to lose our balance even just doing that little rocking movement. And we're going to up the ante a little bit by lifting the heels and lifting the toes. So we'll start by lifting the heels, coming up onto the balls of the feet. Good. And then slowly lower the heels. Rock back. You don't have to lift the balls of your feet. You can just lift up the toes. And then rock forward, lift, and rock back, lift the toes. And then we can coordinate the breath. Inhale as you lift up. Exhale as you rock back. Inhale as you lift. Exhale as you lower. And then we'll add one more ball to juggle, lifting the arms as you lift the heels, breathing in. And then exhale, lower the heels, lower the arms, lift the toes. A couple more like that. The last one. And if your breath pace is different from mine, please follow yours. Don't try to match mine. Everybody breathes at a different rate. Right. And then next time you come down, stay there. Right. 
And then we're going to take one step forward, just as if you're walking, just a small step forward. And I'll turn to the side so you can maybe see a little better. And bend both of your knees, keeping your body over your back leg. And what we're looking for here is a stretch in the back ankle, the back, sort of the, the bottom part of the uh, calf into the ankle. And then we'll bring the hands down to the front knee and step the back foot further back. And so now a straight back leg and you're pressing the heel toward the ground. It doesn't have to come to the ground, but you wanna feel that stretch now a little higher up in your calf. Stepping onto your front foot, you can take the back foot and bring your toes, top of your foot, toenails down. Don't press too hard here. And if your foot starts to cramp, turn it the other way and stretch the arch. If you want a little more, roll from your baby toe to your big toe. If you're stretching across the top of your foot. And then ball of your foot down, press the heel forward to stretch the arch. And then from there, you can either lift the foot and circle the ankle or keep your toes on the ground to circle the ankle. Good. Give the leg a shake and bring it down. Feel both feet on the ground. Maybe notice if you can discern any difference between the one foot and the other. And again, I'm not looking for a right answer. Or there's no right or wrong answer. It's about tuning in and noticing and being present with whatever we have going on. And then we'll do the other side. So the other foot's gonna take a, a small step forward. You'll bend both knees, keeping your weight over your back foot to feel a stretch in the back ankle. And then you'll bring your hands forward and step back with the back leg to find a stretch a little higher up in the calf now. Stepping onto your front foot, take the back foot, top of the foot down, Often just the weight of the leg and just hanging there is enough. And if you need to hold on to something, please do. You could roll from one side to the other. And then the ball of your foot and toe pads down, press your heel forward. And then you're going to lift that foot and circle, circle the ankle. It could be toes on the ground if you find that helpful with your balance. Circle one way and then the other. And then give it a shake. And bring it down. So feet side by side. Lift your toes up, spread them out, bring them down. And then let your weight sink a little more into your heels. So that line from your sit bones, so I talked about plugging your sit bones into the earth. Now imagine your sit bones, those plugs, have a kind of anchor or root going all the way down your back, the back of your legs and into the earth through your heels. If you feel really sturdy and grounded like a tree. And then also like a tree, imagine from your waist up the trunk of the tree lifting. And then the crown of your tree spreading from the crown of your head. So you're this, this beautiful tree into the earth from below, lifting from above. Well, let's take another breath in, reach up. Imagine the crown of your tree spreading all around you as you exhale and bring the arms down to your side. And once more, reaching your branches out, lift your heart, feel your 
beautiful tree anchored into the earth, but lifting up toward the sky one more time. Okay, bring the hands together overhead this time and let the hands come down into the space in front of your heart. Now, if you need to hold on to something, we're gonna work with uh, a little bit of balance. You can hold on. And otherwise, let's bring the hands to the hip. So we'll lift one knee, take it out to the side, and bring it back down. And then other leg, lift, rotate, and come down. Lift, rotate, come down. All right, and now we're going to lift one knee, take it out to the side with the foot coming forward, and then take the knee across and lift the foot to the side. So it's external rotation, internal rotation. External, internal. Good, give it a shake. And we'll do the other side. So lifting, external rotation, internal rotation. If you wanna bring your foot down, that's fine too. You can do the same thing with your toes on the ground. Good, and then give it a shake and bring it down. All right, let's take the feet a little bit apart now and do a few circles with the hips. And circle in one direction, circle the other way. Notice how your hips feel now. Right, and come back to the center and bring the feet in again. So let your weight come into your heels once more. Again, lifting the arms reaching your branches up, bring your hands together, bring them back to the heart. And then from here, shift your weight to one foot, bend the other knee, but don't push the hip out to the side. So just a little bend and come up onto the toes of that bent leg. And then rotate the knee to the side, external rotation. You can bring the foot in close to the ankle and leave it there or lift it up onto the ankle or the calf. Or if you like, and it's available to you, you can reach down and press your foot into your thigh. And then if you're comfortable here, hands can stay at the heart. Out to the sides is a little bit easier for balance. And overhead reminds us to feel that tree energy of lifting as we root into the earth. Relax your face, your jaw. I find it helps, it helps when I smile. And then when you're ready, slowly release. Releasing the arms, release the leg. Bend and straighten a few times to make sure you're not bringing tension into the hips, especially the standing leg is working pretty hard here. All right, when you're ready, come back to the center. Take the arms to the sides and lift with the breath in. Bringing your palms together. Bring the hands down in front of your heart. Lift the crown of your head and bend the opposite knee coming onto the toes and turning the foot and knee, the whole leg to the side. And then maybe leaving the foot on the floor, bringing it closer, maybe lifting it onto the ankle or the calf. You wanna avoid pressing against your knee. So if you wanna go higher, you can use your hand to guide your foot into your thigh. Now there's no goal, again, there's no destination we're trying to get to. I find it more comfortable and easier to hold the pose with my foot higher, and for others it's just impossible. So listen to your own body if you lose balance. And I have to say, you probably chose your easier side first, since I didn't say which side to do first. So this side may be a little more challenging for you. Good, when you're ready. Your hands are at the heart still, you can reach them around and release the leg. And again, give the legs a little shake, arms a little shake, 
Just let the body be floppy. <laughs> Do a little dance, be as floppy as you can. Like you've got no bones. <laughs> <laughs> shake out nice <laughs> great let's do a few forward bends to release after the tree pose we'll come up with a breath in as you come forward you can either bring your hands to your legs or reach down towards the ground we'll come all the way up reaching up sending your roots down reaching to the sky and then exhale bowing forward releasing any tension especially in the neck and the shoulders a couple more lifting and exhaling releasing right next time you come into the forward bend if it feels good stay for a few breaths you can either again have your elbows on your thighs or Hang forward, maybe crossing the arms if that feels good to you. Do bend your knees, let your head release. And then we're going to make our way back to the ground. So you can get there however you like. You can squat and then sit. You can move to all fours and then swing your legs around whatever works. You're just going to come right back down to the mat. And we're going to come right down onto our backs. And when you get there, have your knees bent. Bring your hands onto your belly. And just take a moment to feel your breath. Feel the rise and fall of your belly with your breath. Any movement that you're aware of at all is fine. You don't need it to be really a huge movement. I'm just tuning into what movement is there. Notice the state of your mind now. Is your mind as busy as it was when you first joined the class? Maybe it's busier, maybe it's less busy. But just notice, again, without judging, without creating a story of what's better or what's right. Notice what's true for you. Okay, then we're going to take the arms out to the sides. Could be shoulder height, could be a little higher, could be a little lower. Whatever feels right for your arms and you might adjust that positioning as we work with the twist. So as you twist, you can take the knees in one direction and take the head in the opposite direction. And then come back to center and switch. If it feels good to you, stay in the twist to one side. And as you're staying, you can play with two different parts of the twist. So one part is the leg. The top leg could move more across your body if you want more twist. Or if you want less twist, you can take that top leg and move your knee towards the ceiling with your foot on the floor. So the more the leg goes down and across the body, the more twist. So you can play around with what feels right for you there. And then the opposite arm. The more you raise the arm on the ground towards your head, the more stretch you'll feel in your armpit, your shoulder, and your chest. And the more you lower it down towards your hip, the less stretch you're going to feel. So it's not about a position, a certain position being right. 
but that it's right for you. So find the expression of the pose that works. And if you've been staying on one side, you'll want to stay on the other side as well. And again, playing around with how you modify that position. And it may be quite different one side to the other. Certainly, I feel that it's very different twisting this way for me than the other way. And so I just modify to make it work for my body, for what's going on right now, and then try to relax and breathe. Eventually, you'll roll back onto your back. And when you get there, you'll probably feel your hips are off kilter a little bit from the twist. You can lift up into a mini bridge. And then from your mini bridge, lower slowly. So you're bringing the vertebrae down one by one. So your hips come down to the ground and then knees can come to the chest with one hand on each knee. And then the movement here is to simply straighten your arms, breathe in, bend your elbows, let the knees draw in toward your chest as you exhale. And you'll do this movement several times, going at your own breath, pace, and rhythm. If there's any other movement that would feel good, feel free to explore that now. So it might be rocking or circling the knees or maybe stretching the limbs and shaking them out. Just whatever would feel good to you. Maybe stretching along the ground. Just tune into what your body would enjoy the most. Gentle movement, stretching. And then eventually, we're going to make our way to Shavasana or to the final resting pose of the class. So you can lie down or you can come up to sit. It's up to you, whatever you prefer. Most people choose to lie down at the end of class, but Sometimes if you've got somewhere you need to be after and you need to be alert and awake, you might prefer to sit if you tend to nod off when you're lying down. Take your time to get comfortable. If you're not quite warm enough, add a sweater or a blanket. It's that funny time of year where it's hard to get the temperature just right. So adjust as you need to. If you want, when you're lying down, your knees can be bent. And I find if I have my knees bent, I like to bring my feet to, or knees together, feet wider apart, in this kind of position, so that there's no effort. You can also have your legs straight and perhaps have a bolster or a blanket rolled up under your knees so that there's a little less, uh, a little more support for your lower back. Your arms can rest on your body or out to the sides on the ground. Whatever's comfortable. It's really not uh, important how you're lying as long as you're comfortable. And ideally, the spine is in alignment. right? So the head isn't turned to one side. Some people need to be on their side for Shavasana just because it's more comfortable. If that's the case, make sure you've got enough padding under your head so that your head is not tilted, that it's, again, in line with your spine. So make whatever adjustments you need to to be as comfortable as possible. 
And then come back to your breath. As you exhale, soften and sink down. As you inhale, let the breath just come to you. There's no need to breathe any special way. You're just letting the breath come in as it will. Exhaling and letting the breath go. Let your eyelids be heavy and the muscles around your eyes soft. Let the area around your mouth be relaxed. And your jaw especially, the surfaces of your teeth slightly apart. There's no temptation to clamp or clench your jaw. As you let the weight of your head sink into the earth, if you're lying down, Feel your neck release. And if you've chosen to stay seated, just find that balance point where the head is balanced over the spine and there's no effort. Exhale and soften in the shoulders and the arms. Feel the separating of your collarbones as the shoulders drop even more. Arms and hands relaxed. And really check in with your hands. Let the hands be completely relaxed. There's nothing you need to do. Know where you need to be as much as possible, body and mind together in this moment. Exhaling and letting go, the upper chest, upper back. Feel the rib cage soften and sink down. Dropping down through the lower back around the waist. Feel your belly soften and sink. Relaxing right down into the hips and pelvis. Soften right down into the lowest part of your abdomen between your hip bones. And into the hip flexors where the thighs meet the pelvis. Relax your buttocks and sink your pelvis even more. Feel the earth beneath you and relax into that support. Soften and relax your thighs, your knees. Calves, ankles. And let your whole body sink down. 
Let whatever stress you've been carrying drain away as you exhale. It may come back as you inhale. That's fine. Just let it go again with the next exhale. Whatever thoughts come into your mind, they're not necessary now. Let them go. Soften and sink down. Exhale and release. And as you continue to rest, relax, and release, I'll share with you one of my very favorite chants that reminds us that we are whole, we are complete, that we're perfect just as we are, perfectly imperfect. It reminds us that we are connected to everyone and everything, even when we feel separate, alone, broken. We are whole, we are connected. Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purname Vavashishyate Om Shanti 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 Take a moment now to notice how your mind and body are feeling as we come towards the end of the practice, tuning in, maybe comparing it to how you felt when you joined the class an hour and a bit ago. And then gradually let your breath deepen a little bit. Feel as though you're inviting some good, fresh energy into your body with each breath. You're still exhaling fully. Feeling that sense of inviting energy and in, inviting the breath to energize your body. And then gradually add some movement. And I should say, if you want to rest a little longer, in Shavasana, you can just ignore me and stay where you are. But if you're ready to move on with your day, you can start to move and wiggle your fingers and toes, wiggle, shake, stretch, whatever would feel good until you're ready to come upright and then you might roll onto your side first and make your way back upright. From here, arms to the sides. And let's take a big breath in, gathering. As if we could gather all of the calm, all of the good energy, whatever we've managed to connect with through the class, bringing it to our heart, where we can carry it forth into the world to help support ourselves and each other in finding balance in our emotions in these rather challenging times. Namaste.